This is section 5.3, part A, solving trigonometric equations. Your I can statements for this section. I can solve trigonometric equations using algebraic techniques, and I can solve trigonometric equations using basic identities. So if we take a look at this example, think of your trigonometric identity or trigonometric function as a variable, it's just an x. So let's pretend this was 2x minus radical 3 is equal to x. You know how to solve this type of problem. You get the x on one side, you get everything else on the other, and then you try to get the x completely by itself. So that's the same concept we're going to do here. We're going to try to get all the tangents on one side, everything else on the other, then get the tangent by itself so we can actually solve for the value. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to subtract the tangent of x from both sides. Two tangents minus one tangent will just leave you with one tangent of x minus radical three is equal to zero. We need to take that radical three to the other side. Right now it's a negative, so to move it, we're gonna make it positive. So we have the tangent of x is equal to radical three. Now this is where you're gonna need your unit circle. Remember tangent is equal to the y value over the x value. So we're going to look at our unit circle. Anywhere on your unit circle, you need to find values of y and x so that if we simplify y over x, we're going to get radical 3. For this to work, our y value could be radical 3 over 2. Our x value could be 1 half. Or our y value could be negative radical 3 over 2 and our x value could be negative one half because a negative and negative will cancel and give us a positive. To check to make sure these are right coordinates, if we have radical three over two and one half, remember you multiply by the reciprocal, those are gonna cancel, and that just leaves you with radical three. So these are the x and y coordinates that we need on our unit circle. Now if you look on your unit circle, where do you have an x coordinate of 1 half and a y coordinate of radical 3 over 2? This is going to be at pi over 3. And we are going to have a x coordinate of negative 1 half and a y coordinate of negative radical 3 over 2 at x is equal to 4 pi over 3. Now we're finding all solutions and we need to remember that the unit circle keeps repeating every time it goes around. One whole revolution is two pi. So this can keep repeating every two pi. And we don't know how many two pi's it's gonna take. So we put a two n pi. That represents all the revolutions that the unit circle can make. If we take a look at this one, we want to get the sine by itself. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to subtract our 1. Now we have 4 times sine squared, so we are going to divide both sides by 4. Now remember, sine squared is the same thing as sine of x squared. So to get the sine of x, by itself, we are going to take the square root of both sides. But when you take the square root, remember you do have the plus and the minus. So we have the sine of x is equal to plus or minus. The square root of 3 is radical 3. The square root of 4 gives us 2. To get the x by itself, we do the inverse of radical 3 over 2 which means you're gonna look at your unit circle. You're gonna find all of the values. Remember, sine is your y-coordinate. So you're gonna find all the y-coordinates of positive or negative radical three over two. There are four locations where we have a y-value of positive or negative radical three over two. That's gonna be pi over three, two pi over three, 4 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. But again, this is all solutions, so it doesn't matter how many times we go around the circle. One whole circle is 2 pi, but we can go around that circle multiple times, so it's plus 2 n pi.
Now on these last two examples, it's just said solve, so we had to find all solutions. But it is possible where they just narrow where your interval of your answers are going to be. So if it says find all solutions on the interval of 0 to 2 pi, that means including 0 up to 2 pi, but not including 2 pi. So we no longer have to add that plus 2 n pi to our answer. So if we take a look at this example, I see we have a cosine on both pieces, so I'm going to take everything to the left side. Now there's a cosine here and there's a cosine here, so I'm going to factor that cosine out. Now we're left with cosine of x times the sine of x minus 3. We're just going to set both of those pieces equal to 0, and we're going to solve for x. So we're going to set the cosine of x equal to 0, and we're going to set the sine of x minus 3 equal to 0. On the first part, to get the x by itself, we're just going to do the inverse. Now remember, cosine is your x-coordinate, so you're going to look at your unit circle for any x-coordinates of 0. We have an x-coordinate of 0 at pi over 2, and we have an x-coordinate of 0 at 3 pi over 2. Now we could have more solutions on the other side, so we can solve this as well. So we're going to add 3 to both sides. To get the x by itself, we're going to do the inverse sine. But if you remember back from chapter 4, you can only take the inverse sine and the inverse cosine if the values are between negative 1 and 1. Since 3 is larger than 1, we cannot find a solution there. So our two answers for this problem will be pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. For the last example, part A, again we're just finding it for the interval between 0 and 2 pi. If you notice, we have a cosine of fourth x plus cosine squared of x minus 2 is equal to 0. This makes me think of x to the fourth plus x squared minus 2. And I know I can factor something that's in that form. So that means we can also factor here. I need to find two things that multiply together to get me cosine to the fourth. So that would be cosine squared of x times cosine squared of x. We need to find values that multiply to get me negative 2, but add to get a positive 1. So I have a positive 2 and a negative 1, and we have this factored. So now we're just going to set each piece equal to 0. And we're going to solve for x. Over here, we're going to subtract the 2 from both sides. So we have cosine squared of x is equal to negative 2. Remember, that's the same thing as cosine of x squared is equal to negative 2. To get the cosine by itself, we're going to take the square root of both sides. But you cannot take the square root of a negative value, so there are no solutions over here. On the other side, we're going to add 1 to both sides. Again, cosine squared of x is the same thing as cosine of x squared. To get the cosine by itself, we're going to take the square root of both sides, but when you do that, remember you have the plus or minus. So we have cosine of x is either equal to positive or negative 1. To get the x by itself, when you're looking for the angle, you always take the inverse cosine. So this means we're going to look on our unit circle. We're going to look at x coordinates that are either positive or negative 1. And that'll be at 0 and at pi. We do not include the 2 pi because this is a curved bracket. So that means up to but not including 2 pi. So our two answers will be x is equal to 0 and x is equal to pi.